I'm joined here today by the one, the only, Aaron McKenzie, coming off the win over Joe Giannotti at LFA 94 this past weekend. What's going on, sir? How are you? Doing good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for asking. Things are a little bit crazy today, right? The, the election has been going on and everything. It seems like it's a it's a weird day in American history. Absolutely. I just, everybody's holding their breath waiting. It's, it's crazy to see. Yeah, I think it's it's coming to an end soon, though. But how's everything been where you're at currently in the world in Oklahoma? I know in North Carolina it's been a little bit crazy. Uh, how are things with you? And we're uh, we're still trying to figure everything out. I was actually I've been at work all week with no power. We're running one cash register and uh, a credit card machine and one light on a generator out back. Uh, oh, yeah. We had a big ice storm last week, so they're still working on getting all that stuff back together. And so, uh, where do you work? I uh, work at a feed store. Uh, it's Britain Feed and Seed. Uh, carry carry fifty pound feed bags and dog food and uh, hay bales around all day long. I assume that's got to be good a little bit for the training, right? Get your strength and conditioning in at work. It definitely is good, but there's there's days where you don't want to move around very much, too. That's the same. So what do you do for recovery? I assume you have to be smart about it, right? Because if you have your training and work on top of it, like that's got to be an important part of sort of uh, your, your plan. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I always try and keep two days in for recovery. Usually it's uh, Friday and Sunday, so I like to get a little walk in on those days. Uh, always make sure I stretch and roll out my back. Uh, when I can, I'll go hit some cryo. It's a little hard sometimes, but uh, I like to do all that stuff. Uh, this fight, I did a lot of uh, leg soaks, got my baths in uh, just to keep my legs fresh and keep moving because I do a lot of cardio. And uh, speaking of recovery, I know on Twitter a lot of people were telling me that uh, BCAAs were important for recovery. Is that something that you use at all? Uh, a little bit. Uh, so I, I'm an energy drink guy more than coffee. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I, I'll lean for the ones that have the BCAs and the electrolytes more than, uh, more than the others. I don't like the sugary ones too much cause I don't want to get too much sugar and, uh, uh, sugar and caffeine in that way. I like to get them a little bit less calories in. Uh, so I, I'll lean for those ones when I need some. And, uh, mostly I just try and replenish the electrolytes, maybe a body armor or a little electrolyte here and there. And so how is it for you juggling your job alongside uh, your MMA career? I know a lot of people do that, especially at the regional level. How's that experience for you? Uh, I actually have a great boss. Uh, her name is Virginia. She helps me out a lot. She gives me a good long lunch break so I can go train every single day at lunch. Uh, lets me leave at 30 every day so I can go pick up my wife. So it's just, it's, it's been an uh, absolute blessing to me to have her and, uh, and my current job. So is that something when you do your job at the same time as your MMA career, do you have to kind of sit down with your boss and explain your situation so you guys can find some kind of understanding? Like, how does that happen? Uh, absolutely. When when she was looking for somebody, uh, I told her straight up what I did uh, and, like, told her every once in a while I'll be gone for half a week and I might come back with some bruising and scratches <laughs> on the face. Uh, so it took her a little bit to kind of understand, but uh, eventually she was like, yeah, this is, this is no big deal. I appreciate all your help. And uh, I appreciate that she lets me do what I need to do. Well, what's the reaction when you kind of explain that you're a fighter? Because I think a lot of people, they imagine like a green mohawk, the jail tattoos and stuff like that. What's kind of the reaction when you explain what you do? Well, she had actually had uh, somebody who did martial arts before work there. So it wasn't quite the same level, but she did have some experience with it. Uh, and my friend worked there as well. So my friend kind of told her about it beforehand. Mm. Uh, so she, she definitely likes to refer to me as like her little hidden fighter because uh, if you look at me, most people wouldn't know what I did on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, I assume that's got to be a good thing too because I've heard a lot of fighters and they go out in public, they have a lot of, uh, especially drunk people that, that try to, you know, try to get them to fight them. They want to test their, their unknown fighting abilities. I assume you don't get that a lot. Right. Um, no, yeah, I, I try and stay to myself for the most part. Um, my wife likes to think I'm, I can be a jerk out in public, but I'm perfectly <laughs> fine unless somebody uh, uh, does something that I don't really care for. Otherwise, I'm probably the nicest person you could meet. So so what's the protocol if someone were messing with you in public? Like, I assume a lot of people would think that fighters would just instantly just punch people in the face, ask questions later. But is there some kind of understanding like within the gym that, you know, maybe grapple first? Like, is there some kind of uh, agreement like that? Now, me personally, I, I'm not going to fight anybody unless it's an absolute last resort. Um, you never know who's got a gun, who's got a knife, right. especially sure. Oklahoma. Oklahoma's yeah. open carry state. Yeah. Uh, so you don't really want to really mess around with the wrong guy here. Um, but so you just kind of, 
I, I try and stay to myself. Um, uh, if something bad really happens, I'll be like, Hey, I don't really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, and then maybe we can come to an understanding there. Maybe, uh, maybe I just leave, you know, I've never been anywhere. I couldn't just leave. So, uh, I, I like to try and be a little smart there. I know I got a lot more writing on things than most people do. <laughs> That's true. That's very smart. Uh, before we talk about your fight though, I believe you do train with the legendary Rafael Lovato Jr. What kind of update can you give us on him? Cause I know, I believe he, he officially retired with Bellator. Uh, what's kind of the update you can give us from someone that sees him, uh, you know, uh, regularly. So Rafael doesn't want to be done. Rafael wants to get at least one more fight so he can go out on his terms. Uh, he's currently working with, uh, whatever doctors he can, uh, just to try and make sure that everything is safe for him to make that return. Uh, so hopefully we can get some good news from a couple of doctor teams coming up soon, uh, and we can see him back in there. So what kind of role does he play for you guys uh, at the gym? Is he like someone you guys are able to spar with at all, or especially grappling? Is he more like a coach? What's kind of the role, you know, especially for yourself? Oh, man, uh, since day one, Rafael's been lead from the front. Rafael rolls every single day. He rolls with every single person. Uh, he's beat me up more times than I can <laughs> count, uh, and he's tried to choke me probably more than anybody in the world. So uh, that's that's part of where I get that defense from is just having someone as big, strong, and uh, well-versed technically as him uh, come after me every single day. I know uh, if I can fend him off even one out of five times, then I can fend off just about anybody else in the world. Does that give you an extra confidence when you're out there grappling? Like, you know, you have this humongous six foot three guy who's probably the best American jiu-jitsu practitioner, like anybody else in the cage next to it. It can't be that intimidating at all. Absolutely. 100% I agree. It's, it's, it's a huge confidence boost. And then when you're in your own corner grappling with somebody and he's got you in a triangle and you hear you're not getting choked, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a big one. Like definitely helps a lot. Let's talk about your fight a little bit. I know before uh, there was talk of you want to get to the UFC and stuff, like, which is normal. Most fighters do. Well, hopefully they would. This win over Joe Giannotti, where does that kind of put you in uh, in terms of getting eventually to the UFC? Uh, man, so I've got I've got finishes. You know, I got eight finishes. All of them, all my fights before this were finishes. Uh, I have been looking for that name. You know, I, I hadn't had a name on my record. I've had nothing but winning records. Uh, think my my opponent record is close to like 60 and 25 and one now um so i've, I've never fought a loser uh and i've finished all of them I, I wanted that name and joe having fought for the ufc having actually fought for the tough championship uh and some people thought he won that fight it was it was a weird fight for sure joe fights tend tend to be a little weird sometimes but uh, the dude could have very easily been the tough champ, and he could be in the UFC today. So it meant a lot to me to get a win over somebody that has been at that level uh, and has been around and is a known name. So uh, it also probably didn't hurt that, you know, I don't know if Dan is the biggest fan of him, and uh, if I <laughs> put him a little bit further away from trying to get back in the UFC, maybe Dan is a little bit appreciative of him. Uh, what, what kind of talk did you hear after the fight from the fans or on social media and stuff like that? I assume there must have been a lot of positive coming off a win like this. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, everybody was happy that I uh, that I was able to pull it pull it off. Uh, you know, nobody ever really doubted it. Everybody around me knew um, what I'm about and what I can do. Uh, other than that, it was just uh, big congratulations. You know, like everybody uh, everybody wants to see me succeed that I know of. You know. Uh, and I appreciate everybody that's around that's helping me get there. And uh, how do you look back on your performance in the fight? I believe it was one of the first to go to the judges in uh, what's been a little while. Uh, are you happy overall with your performance? Uh, I'm extremely happy. I was able to show everything. I was able to show my striking. I was able to show my wrestling, show submission defense, uh, and show, show a little submission offense. So um, I would have loved to get the finish. You know, I, I'm a finisher. Uh, that's what I do. That's what I want every single fight. So it hurt a little bit that I wasn't able to finish them, but uh, the dude's fought like 20 something times and he's never been finished. So it was always going to be tough. He's a little weird. He brings a little bit something different than most people. Uh, so I, I know I got close a few times. I had a couple other spots where I might've been able to get a little closer, but I just wasn't able to get to him. Uh, but I definitely, uh, definitely very proud of how I performed and uh, always happy to be able to go out and uh, just give it my all. 
And so what's the next step at this point for your career? Is it trying to get the attention of the UFC, staying ready in case there's a call-up, looking at the contender series, or is it potentially fighting for the belt with LFA? What's kind of the uh, the next move for yourself at this point? Uh, 100%. I, I'm trying to – this week I'm getting a little fat, but uh, <laughs> after this week it's keep my weight down, uh, stay ready, just be available in case a call does happen. Uh, I think that LFA title shot might be a little too far out for me. Um, if something hasn't happened by February or March, then maybe I'll consider it. Uh, but I definitely, I definitely want to fight before then. Uh, and I'd love it, uh, to be for the UFC or for someone of that level. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep my weight down, stay ready. If I need to, I can fight at 170. I can fight at 55 in less than three weeks notice. Uh, so I just want to make sure that I'm available. All right, one last question for you, kind of a two-part question. But realistically, when do you think we're going to see you fight again? And uh, ideally, who would you want next? Oh, man, I, I'll take anybody on the UFC ro roster from uh, from Bobby Green to Khabib to uh, Tony Ferguson, myself. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Uh, I'll fight anybody any day of the week, and I, I'd love to have the opportunity to test myself. I know there's a lot of guys around my record in the UFC, so uh, I'd love to give them uh, give them a holler. Go see uh, see what they're made of, and see if I can't test myself against them. Um, it, man, I I don't even care. I don't. I just I I want to fight, and uh, I'd love it to be before the end of the year if I could. Uh, I don't I don't really care that much about Thanksgiving, so I can skip a little turkey and ham and pie just to get that chance. I don't mind. All right, there we go. Well, thanks so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. Congratulations on the victory, and hopefully we'll see you get in the UFC soon. Thank you so much. These are my dogs. They're hanging out with us. <laughs> there we go. Appreciate right. you, Lucas.